Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group. Talk Radio 790 KABC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, and I am Carl Gerber. It's been hot in parts of Southern California today, so try to stay cool tonight because we've got a really hot guest tonight. I'm proud to present to you the most famous landline telephone sex operator I know. Not because I use her services, but because Cindy D has graced this garbage show before. Cindy D, how have you been after the shower injury you suffered over at Nazuki's Neuromassage Clinic? Well, for a couple of cell phone billing cycles, I wasn't leaving the home acreage on account of all damn people recognizing my voice. Why are you talking in a hick accent? Sorry, the live audience already knows who I am. Uh, if the world <laughs> didn't know you were Cindy D, the most famous telephone sex operator in the world, how would things be different? Uh, it got to the point. Here's how it went down. I was in Safari Pets looking for feed uh -huh. for Vargene's pet mongoose. A mongoose is not a pet. It'd go up and show up one day, creeping the ostriches over at Remus Helms' cosplay ostrich ranch. I asked if I could take the cutesy mongoose home. Humanoid said it didn't belong. Imagine that. Shocks the conscious. Outrageous. There's a creature that doesn't belong at Remus Helms' cosplay ostrich ranch? Their loss. Vargene's gain. How is it working out having a pet mongoose? I think he'd really enjoy a venomous snake. Yes, sir. The mongoose is needing a snake. Maybe there's a wildlife center or a zoo who could take the mongoose. No, not my pup. Mongooses are illegal in the U.S. Did you tell the pet store you had a mongoose? I was in Safari Pets, over at the Laurel Plaza Mall. Huh? I asked the kid working there if they had any venomous snakes. He winked at me, sucked in his lips, and motioned to a black curtain in the back. I believe that that pet store has been closed for a good 25 or more years. The mall has been demolished. Really? Did this really happen? I can tell you it happened just like we're here before this live studio audience. Oh, it's not that funny, you guys. Continue on, Cindy D. This customer guy was in there, in the middle of the store, playing some pocket pool, watching two hamsters mate while he's all chewing sunflower seeds. What a creep! Some of the sunflowers he'd spit out are falling on the floor. Others are falling on his stomach. Yeah. It's sticking out of his hang ten t shirt like a foot. Such imagery. The stomach man says to me, sort of low, under his breath I've got a venomous snake in my pants. You want to pet him? I hope you slapped him silly. He caught me off guard. Uh, I asked, How much? What did he say? The tables are turning for Arnie Kleinberg. I'm used to paying to hear your sexy voice. Do you know if that's true? It was him, the guy from Encino who used his... You know what? Uh, he, he doesn't have what Remus Hounds has got. No, sir. He uses it to bang away on the keyboard when he talks to me. What an... Utter and complete loser. I heard about this back in like, oh, 83, 80, 84. I, I can't believe he's still, oh, he's still oiling up on his computer keyboard. He said old habits are hard to break. Jeez, I don't blame you for not wanting to use your normal voice. On account of my Vargin being a genius and all, she started Russian near the end of second grade over at university. 
Day after the pocket pool pet store, I am over at Kovchek, Russian books on Sunset Boulevard. I was asking about Fyodor Dostoevsky. Well, I'm glad to hear that Virginia is appreciating Russian literature. She is. But this stern-looking man in his late 50s is there with a cane, sinister gray beard dropping down five inches from his chin. And all he hears is my voice, and he says... You're really Mistress Lubov. Cindy D and Mistress Lubov, same people. Now that's terrible. He goes by Ivan the Terrible. What do you expect? Well, he sounds like a real charmer. He's been using that handle since he used to be a modem stud. I thought you kicked his ass back in the 80s. Oh, God. I'd, I'd hoped that loser had died or went back to Russia by now. If he embarrasses you again, call me. I'd, I'd love to tell him off. Get this. He started mumbling in Russian. Varjean taught me some Ruski. He said, and then, guess who was in the store? What time of the day was this? About 1.30 on a Tuesday. Well, as I understand things, and you can, you can't say I fully understand all the things that go on in this show... But imagine that a Russian woman, there's this Russian woman who, who claims she wants to inform relatives of presidential candidates about Russian adoption laws. I believe she was there. I, I, I do believe she frequents local Russian bookstores from, say, oh, uh, like 1.27 p.m. to 1.34 p.m. on Tuesdays. But not the Tuesday, uh, not the first or last Tuesday, that is, of any month that has 31 days. Yeah, I think she was in there, but that's not who I was referring to. Guess who was in the Russian bookstore at 1.30 p.m. on the third Tuesday in May? Well, gee whiz, golly wee fans, I give up! Luckily, the Kiev face-slapping champion from episode 49 was in the store, wanting to toke Tolstoy. How do you toke Tolstoy? I've seen it. I've never done it. Well, how's it done? <laughs> there are many ways to do it. We're referring to Toking Tolstoy, right? Yeah. You turn the novel into paper mache, let it sit out for a while and collect mold. You put the moldy novel into a bong and <sighs> deep breaths of the moldy paperback. Oh, that's how it's done. Oh, that must be why the, the head shops are getting so much business these days. Probably. Uh, BTW, um, how's the Kiev face-slapping champion of 2017's face looking after the imposter and bomber tried to fix it? He got a Canadian girlfriend. She convinced him having health insurance wasn't a violation of his freedom. He went to a real doctor who operates in one of those tents underneath the freeway overpasses. The face-slapping champ says his face is ready for more slapping. From what I'd heard after the imposter and Balmer bombed the job, the face-slapping champion tried some of Dr. Zhivago's miracle skin cream, but that pretty much burned a layer of his skin off and opened the wounds again. When I was working over at Nazuki's Nuru Massage Clinic in the shower, he came in there and had a face rub down. That didn't help much either. He said Ikuki's... Uh, her <laughs> on his face affected it even more. Who knows what's in that woman's? Um, I, I do wish that neuromassage clinic in Encino would be shut down. Yeah, it's pretty gross. I'm sure they're doing all sorts of kinky things in that shower now that it's all done. Lupita said she wanted to go back and take pictures of the mortar bed I laid. But the crowds in front were just too big to get in. Episode 51 of the show, which can be viewed on the Carl Gerber with a K channel on YouTube, certainly gave Nazuki's Neuromassage Clinic a lot of publicity. When Nazuki showed up to this here show speaking in broken English on account of not wanting to bore her daughter, Hanita Orchid Helms, to death. Um, so I was talking about the Russian bookstore. 
Um, so Ivan the Terrible started saying lewd things to me in Russian. Actually, <laughs> he used to call in around midnight when I was doing that gig where I did the phone sex thing from home. Guess what happened? You gave him the new number to call you. No. The local Kiev boy, the face-slapping champion, booked Ivan the Terrible in the face. He slapped his face straight off and over to the ocean. Ivan the Terrible doesn't have a Russian nose anymore. What kind of nose does he have now? We're going to find out when we come back in a minute on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. Talk Radio 790 KABC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. And I am Carl Gerber here tonight with Cindy D, the most famous phone sex operator I know. So I've been talking to her and I want to know, Cindy D, what is the legal significance of all this about in the pet store with the man playing pocket pool and talking about a snake? And then Ivan the Terrible saying lewd things to Cindy D in the Russian bookstore. Let me call Barjean. She's a genius. We're about to get legal advice from a seven-year-old non-lawyer. My daughter says... <clears throat> My public persona is that of a phone sex operator. In private, I'd like my privacy maintained. But I am known to the world as the most famous phone sex operator in America. There is not a corner of the country I can go to where a man will not recognize my voice and rise to attention. Can we relate this to sexual harassment? Yes, if you happen to be a Hooters girl, a phone sex operator, or even an actress known for her sultry roles. Can we add porno actress? Yes, we can. If you are one of the above, or even a Nuru massage oh, nurse. Let's leave out the Nuru massage nurse because they may actually engage in uh, sexual acts with customers. Uh, let me clear that with Varjean. She agrees. If you are one of the above and not a neuro nurse, there is no law saying you automatically consent to being sexually harassed. Sexual harassment is a tort of non-consent. Offensive non consented to behavior is sexual harassment. Golden peacocks, I am glad you and Varjean brought this all back to employment law. Oh, it takes brains to run this show. I was wondering, maybe you can tell me, why do all these people who went to college, people who went on and got masturbation degrees, oh, uh -huh. uh, master's degrees, <laughs> important doctors like doctorates in wood science, think they are smarter than everybody else? Is there a reason why you excluded lawyers from those people you think are smart? Do you think lawyers are really that smart? No, <laughs> we're just masters of logic. Just logic. Not that smart. Well, that's a fair statement. Would you ever fly over a foreign city while insulting its mayor on Twitter? No, I think that's downright rude. A true display of parochialism. I have to agree. Varjean said it the same way. There's been a lot of talk about how you're the most famous telephone operator around in the sex variety <laughs> but <laughs> are you even in the business anymore back on episode 51 we learned you were wrongfully terminated from your job at underground operators and i wasn't sure you were operating out of your own bedroom once that termination went down oh it only goes down at the end hey Last week, I was operating out of somebody else's bedroom. Do we have to hear about that? Me and Delicious Divine did a muscular dystrophy fundraiser from her bedroom. It was a two-girl show. The strangeness of my guests never ceased to amaze me. 
I guess it's sort of odd that we'd raise one hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars in eight hours. <laughs> If they saw Delicious Divine, they'd fall off their horses laughing. <laughs> This raises a number of questions. The first of which is, how did two telephone sex operators get involved in a muscular dystrophy fundraiser? How could the two of you raise that much? Sub B, I, I thought Delicious Divine is the one who wrongfully terminated you from your permanent phone sex operating job at Underground Operators. Little sub D, I, I, I guess big sub D in this case. No, no, <laughs> C in your case. Isn't delicious, divine, and a hundred and eighty pound plus moo moo wearing woman in her sixties who puts her hair up with a bone? Oh, as I'm sure you know, the phone sex operating business has been on the decline for some time. Um, I don't. Keep statistics on the telephone phone sex business like I do on the dynamic new field of sanitary napkin database management. Every day, tens of thousands of my customer base drop off. They either die or switch to webcam. What is your source on that? Fox News. Yes, a credible source. On account of me getting all the publicity on the show, I was already a leading English-speaking telephone sex operator when they fired me from underground operators. Their revenues sank about fifty percent. The calls for the crying line dropped off too. On one of your shows, the first time we met in May of last year, you suggested it might be cheaper for teenage girls to pick up the phone and pretend there was somebody else on the other line when they were crying. I'm sort of wondering.、Um... What kind of revenues does an outfit like Underground Operators bring in every month? Oh, when they rehired me, I of course signed a non-disclosure agreement. If I told you that information, I'd be in breach. Is there a specified remedy for that breach of contract? It's called liquidated damage clause. Yes, my contract clearly states I'd have to work off a one hundred thousand dollar fine, either working on Remus Helms' cosplay ostrich ranch in his bedroom, <laughs> or as a Nuru nurse over at Nazuki's Nuru、uh, massage parlor. Oh,、well, that's dreadful, and and illegal in so many respects. I am not gonna breach and do none of that. Well, then it's an unenforceable, although highly effective, liquidated damage clause. Delicious Divine literally begged me to come back. She dropped the damage clause down from one million dollars to a hundred thousand dollars, promised me a guarantee of ten dollars an hour, and fifteen percent of the phone charges, on account of me being a celebrity phone sex operator. They charge nine dollars and ninety-nine cents a minute for me. Do you think there's time in my day for meals and rest breaks? Well, doing the math on this, you are getting looks like ninety nine dollars and ninety one cents an hour, while being paid an illegal hourly rate and presumably being a victim of a number of wage and hour abuses regarding meal and rest breaks. Delicious Divine said ten dollars an hour was okay because my profit sharing made up for the hourly wage. <laughs> Not true. She also said I was a fifteen percent partner, so none of the wage and hourly laws applied. Giving somebody profit sharing or a commission doesn't make them a partner necessarily. How much did you say I'm supposed to be making an hour? Presuming you're on the line the whole hour, you'd get ninety nine dollars and ninety one cents an hour. <laughs> you're right about me being on the line the whole hour, the whole shift too. No breaks for me. Don't you get a bathroom break? <laughs> oh, you're really not a phone sex customer, are you? <laughs> Going to the bathroom is part of the job. Come again. Oh, I hate that phrase. <laughs> A lot of customers do come again if they hear me tingling. How does this? How does this happen to me at every show? Remus Helms is supplying you with guests. He's also sponsoring this show. 
Through the Helms Foundation's $5 billion in funding and 14 inches of endowment. I've heard they're up to a bigger endowment now. <laughs> That's not possible. Remus Helms is an old man. He, he, he can't be growing anymore. <laughs> oh, but he is. Since you're making out like a bandito phone sex operator and you're still doing the Mistress Luboff gig over at Remus Helms' ostrich ranch, why? Playing Mistress Luboff in person at such an important cosplay ostrich ranch isn't something I can give up. Oh, I fully understand that. Can we go over how much I'm supposed to be making at Underground Operators? How much is it for eight hours? Well, at the rates you were telling me, it's close to $720 a shift. That would mean I'm getting $35,000 a week. $720 times five is more like 3500 and change, uh, well, 3600 a week. Something isn't right. Well, the two-girl phone sex muscular dystrophy show isn't right, maybe? The customers paying to hear you pee? Where do we start with what isn't right? Rebus Helms having a charity with more than $5 billion in funding following his initial $200.1 million in Penile seed money when his genital got infringed. No, there's nothing about this picture about your life either that's right. Do you think my daughter being a genius isn't right? Were you reading Fyodor Dostoevsky near the end of second grade? We're going to have to find out if I was when we come back. But you can call me at the office for a real sexual harassment case at 877-525-0700 during normal business hours. I really am a real licensed employment lawyer. If you have a wage and hour case involving commissions or money you weren't paid, I'd like to hear from you at 877 525 Zero seven hundred. I have offices throughout California, and we're about to be getting a Bakersfield office condo. Very exciting. You can reach me at 877-525-0700 for an employment and labor lawyer that's been doing this for over 25 years and is going to make your case stand out. I can guarantee you that because I'm the one that writes this garbage every week. When we come back, you'll hear more of the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. And hey, listeners, regardless of what age you are out there, I really advise you do try Match.com because the couple people I know that met their spouse on the telephone sex operator lines, it, it, it didn't work out very well. <laughs> All right, we're here with Cindy D, who is, of course, in that business. And I got to tell you, Cindy D, back when I was your daughter's age in second grade, I was more involved in making graphs based upon consumer reports, ratings of vehicles. Hmm. Well, I can tell you, I'm not getting 3500 a week. I'm even buying my own Nim Jom Pei Pao Kao. And I'm still buying lots of Jello. You should have negotiated an endless supply of hard candies and jello for your comeback to underground operators. I definitely should have called you at one eight seven seven five two five zero seven zero zero at your office. Eight seven seven five two five zero seven zero zero is not a phone sex line. It's the office number of Carl Gerber. Workplace lawyer. I do feel a bit left out not having had the opportunity to negotiate your comeback contract. (laughs) It might be hard to believe, but after a girl's been on the phone all day at $2.99 a minute, or even $9.99 a minute, making squishy noises with jello all day, sucking noises with the hard candy, she doesn't feel much like making another phone call. Why? You think you'll have to make a jello sound when you call your lawyer? 
I have heard Dumas made Bouncy Mary make slapping noises when she called up to find out about her child custody case. Well, Dumas is a disreputable lawyer. He, um, you know, lawyers can't have sexual relations with their clients unless they're already in one with the client before the representation. Yeah, I, I think Dumas had something going on with Bouncy Mary. I'm pretty sure they met on the phone sex line. How much is the uh, hardworking girl like Bouncy Mary earn doing the old phone sex routine? Oh, Bouncy Mary's not a top star. She's not on the bottom either. They list out our revenues on the board every week. There's a lot of room between me and size two. I would have thought you were a size two. In real life, four. I tell my customers all sorts of things. Then who's size two? Uh, she's the number two girl at Underground Operators. Just a coincidence, all that two stuff? She does two girl calls, too. Are you at liberty to disclose your wages? <laughs> or is that a breach of contract? Uh, let me look. I have the contract right here. It's illegal to prevent an employee to disclose their wages. Mr. Gerber, you shouldn't be peering over. You aren't supposed to be reading the contract. I could find the clause a lot faster. You're still on the first sentence. I'm sorry. It's so confusing. The same words keep repeating. What word is that? Beach briefs. The word is breach. It appears in the first sentence of this contract 11 times. <laughs> You weren't supposed to see that. I'm a lawyer. An employer can't prevent an employee from having a lawyer read their contract. Delicious Divine said she wouldn't accept any changes. Then the contract most certainly will be construed against her if there is an ambiguous term. I don't want to sue her. We're friends now. She even picks up Varjean at the university if I'm on a long call. Then you work more than... Eight hours sometimes? Quite a lot. I get gangbang callers. Oh, my God. Can I see some of your paychecks? I, I don't think you're being paid right. Mm, Delicious Divine said we had to get with the times and go electronic deposit. Can I see your pay stubs online? I, I think so. I'm supposed to be able to. Well... Then, can, can we look now? <laughs> I'd show you, but I've never been able to get in. You've tried to pull up the pay stubs? Oh, I've tugged at it for an hour. Nothing came. Uh-huh. You know, I was spinning the mouse all over the screen, clicking, entering my name, my password... The screen kept shaking and saying, invalid password, invalid name. Did you confront Delicious Divine with the fact you can't get in and see your pay stubs? And a lot of the girls can't get in. Some don't want to either. But you want to get in. Not really. That's not my thing. Getting in like that is for other people. But there is no other way for you to see your pay stub. Seeing is believing. <laughs> Imagine if the caller saw Delicious Divine. Well, some go for a thing like her. An employer can't devise a system where the employees can't get into the electronic portal where their pay stubs are supposed to be, where they would find out uh, how, how many hours they're being paid for it, what hourly rate, what overtime rate they're being paid for, do, do commissions and ETC. ETC? Ick, cetera. I thought ETC is like when the girls who do Snapdragon chat send a pic of their boobs or something and the image disappears in like 10 seconds. Delicious Divine doesn't like that. She is very strict about no pictures to customers. Unless the girl decides to start dating the customer and... Then the customer has to pay Delicious Divine a week of the girl's pay for every date. I'm, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> Excuse me, but you just said something. It was a phrase. 
I might know what the problem about my pay not being 3500 a week is. Yeah, if you're being gypped out of wages, I've got a delicious wage and hour lawsuit for a delicious divine to defend. <laughs> no, we're sort of friends now. I don't want to sue her. Go right ahead and be ripped off. I am thinking delicious divine can't help it. Can't help what? Being such an edible plus size woman over 60? Oh, no, 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 no. Her husband makes her eat lots of caramel and bonbons. He wants her the size she is. I, I really don't care. Do our listeners care? Probably not. Maybe. It's weird. Maybe abuse. What's with all you phone sex operators being married? We both have very supportive husbands. I do declare supportive husbands might make the best phone sex operators. Your husbands are in the trade, too? Well, Semex is in concrete, as you know. Dantani and Divine is an esthetician. Do you think any of the listeners even got that joke? Barjean did. She knows what Dantanian means. Uh, how do you know? She's on the live feed of the Carl Gerber with AK channel on YouTube right now. She's explaining all the jokes as they come out. Well, that's good. I, I doubt anyone gets our jokes. <laughs> Somebody might get one of them. To change the subject, I was over at the hardware store buying a tested toilet plunger. An authentic one from Miserly Cakes, Weird-Shaped Pastas, and Tested Toilet Plungers. Uh, luckily, I haven't had to transport one of those things in a while. You've, you've got to triple bag them. It's too disgusting. Do you want a toilet plunger that's been... Don't you want a toilet plunger that's been pre-tested? <laughs> what if some idiot like Dumas comes over and clogs your toilet? You have to hold your nose, run into the bathroom like a rotor hero, and the rubber part of the plunger breaks off in the toilet. What are you going to do? Fish it out? I, I can't believe what goes through your mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, we sort of got off subject. Well, isn't that the point of a pointless talk show? Maybe. And this is a pointless talk show now, isn't it? <laughs> this is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. It's heard every Sunday from 7 to 8 on KBC. Yeah, if you want to listen to it or you can hear it on YouTube. But I'm hoping I, I get some calls about real employment cases, too. You know, that happens at least 200 times every week to me. So call at 877-525-0700 for a rock star employment lawyer. 877-525-0700. If you want me to show you a picture of Cindy D, 877-525-0700. If you've got a real breach of contract. When we come back, we'll find out what else is going through the very, very odd mind to Cindy D on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. Yeah, you got to treat your phone sex operator right or they might ding you. But, you know, I, I got another question about this whole thing with the phone sex operators. And I just heard an ad about Indeed where they're a good company. The resumes are all over the place. But, like, what do you do in terms of the resume for a phone sex operator job, Cindy D? <laughs> well, you know, I, I have some things. Uh, but before I forget, I've I've been having some nightmares about some of the phone sex calls. Makes it hard for me to remember unimportant stuff. But before I forget, Delicious Divine isn't paying me the full three kilos and five C notes because there are taxes. That's why I'm not getting all the money. True. The 3600 a week is gross pay. There are employment taxes and then the net pay. She said it's like a tax that got enacted on landline phone sex calls. Does the same tax exist for cell phone host of phone sex calls? No, that's why I don't have to pay the tax when I was operating out of my bedroom. I haven't heard of this tax. 
It's like a tax, but it's not called a tax. There's another word for it that starts with the same first letter as the word for, you know, women's things up top that sometimes have more fat than others, sometimes have silicone. I can't say the word on the radio. A word that starts with a, a B that it's like a tax. It's it's not it's not immediately coming to me. It, the word doesn't start with a B. It starts with a T, just like tax. Oh, a tariff. Yes, yes, that's right. Delicious Divine said the president enacted a 25% tariff on all landline phone sex calls. Oh, yeah, that tariff. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, but it's, it's, it's only if the phone sex operator is in Mexico or China. I work out of Pasadena. Oh, then there's no tariff on you. The alleged justification for the tariff, and it, it, it has really shaken the stock market, the, the commodities market. I'm, I, I'm not sure why the commodities market or, or the, the soybean futures market, but the justification for the landline phone sex tariff Ooh. on Mexican and Chinese landline phone sex operators is twofold. Oh, oh, oh. Let me write this down. Go slow. Okay, the tariff against China is obvious. There are more landline phone sex operators there per capita than there are politically repressed citizens. What do you mean politically repressed citizens? Well, the president isn't concerned about the politically repressed citizens who have never heard of the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests. Mm. Varjean agrees. You have a smart seven-year-old. She's almost eight. I hope she has a lovely birthday party. I can only imagine what the theme will be. <laughs> well, she's sort of off of the pole dancing for the time being. It's going to be a voice acting party. Her friends <laughs> are going to imitate the voices of disreputable world leaders. Oh, how many genius friends is she inviting? 195. One for each country in the world. I'm not sure the leaders of all 195 recognized countries are disreputable. Varjean agrees. They're doing dead leaders, too, like Stalin and the mayor of Simpleton's great-grandfather, Quiggles the rabbit. Quiggles the Easter bunny? He's Dr. Denon's non-partner from episode 53. Would you believe Remus Helms got Varjean into Dr. Denton's office? She's seeing the Dr. Denton, not his wife and not the dentist in the Easter bunny costume. You are easily distracted. You're, you're, you're holding that pin in attention. We <laughs> swiped right past the reason for the Mexican landline phone sex operators being slapped with the tariff. I think I kind of know the answer for the Mexican tariff. It's about the fact that all those Mexican landline phone sex operators are flooding the market. They're willing to work for a peso a call. Maybe not willing, the cartel's pretty much pressuring them in all the places where they aren't, you know, where the cartel isn't supposed to go in back. Uh, if the cartel has sank as low as controlling the Mexican landline phone sex operators, they must be on their way out. How much could that dying industry possibly net them? It's not a dying industry. There's more money for the cartel from the Mexican phone sex operators than the drug trade will ever bring. Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. We're breaking an important story here on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. Cindy D is obviously an expert on the subject matter of landline phone sex. She has just disclosed inside information that there is more money for the Mexican cartel in landline phone sex business than drug trade. Why is that, Cindy D? Uh, it's a trade secret. I can't tell you. Come on. You aren't even a Mexican phone sex operator of a landline variety. Come fast. Have you ever been to Mexico? Of course. I had a boat there in the 90-day yacht club, but before that, my parents lived in Ahihik. I also spent time in Ahihik when I was a lawyer. Ahihik. That's near Lake Chapala. I have heard the lake dried up. Mm, they had to drain some of it to upgrade the telephone wires. Not accurate. I can't say anymore. 
Well, that might be for the best. Let's just leave it at this. There's a 25% tariff on landline phone sex operators operating out of Mexico and the People's Republic of China. But, Cindy D., you don't operate out of either. There is no tariff on you. Delicious Divine is ripping you off and not giving you your pay stubs. Is that all you can think of, employ like labor lawyer, well, like I, employment as a labor lawyer? Yeah, I, I, I could be more specific on which labor codes are being violated. Shall I be? I was hoping we'd get into the cartel's effect on the landline phone sex industry, comparing and contrasting it to Fidel Castro's influence on plantain. Oh, gosh, I I really missed a boat there. Uh, Barco, that, 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 uh, how could have I missed that? <laughs> Duh. <coughs> Next week is Father's Day, and we're going to talk about cruising on Van Nuys Boulevard, Whittier Boulevard, and Hollywood Boulevard. I'd hope you'd do the compare and contrast thing about landline phone sex operators and Fidel Castro. I think more fathers will identify with a show about cruising and classic cars. (laughs) I think more fathers want to hear my voice than hear about classic cars (laughs) you know that's the thing we have these very square listeners who would get all all offended if we talked about the helms foundation's 14 inches of endowment and over five billion in funding is that why more people listen to the second half of this show than the first Exactly. The square listeners stick around once we get things really heated up. Talk about plantain and landline phone sex operators. Would you say this show is slapstick? I'm not entirely sure how a radio show could be slapstick. (laughs) There's a lot of slapping around a phone sex line and nobody can see what's really happening there. Um, could there be a difference between a comedy radio show and landline phone sex calls? Mm, no, they're the same things. Right. I could really be you. I am not an employment lawyer. Are you an employment lawyer? <laughs> I spend about 50 hours a week doing phone sex from a landline. How many hours a week do you work as a phone sex operator? Delicious Divine pays me daily overtime. Does Delicious Divine pay you overtime? (laughs) This is crazy. Like, crazy hat day at the vending machine library. Heavens to beeswax! I've been to a couple of crazy hat days at the library vending machine. Isn't that taking it a little far? Far comparing this show to Crazy Hat Day at the library vending machine. (laughs) Okay, okay. I got a little carried away. Boy, I mean, perverted old men. (laughs) Oh, it's almost 8 o'clock. 8 p.m. is prime time for perverted old men to call phone sex lines. Now that there's no Sunday night movie on TV anymore, (laughs) I got to get to Pasadena in 10 minutes. Listeners, if you see a speeding 82 T-top Camaro and a lot of blonde hair spinning around, make way. Cindy D's got to service the landline calls. Phone sex calls from all over the world are on hold for Cindy D, the most famous English-speaking landline telephone sex operator. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, a real workplace lawyer, licensed in four states with about 15 offices in California. I've been doing this for over 25 years, and I still represent employees when I'm not writing this show. So call me at the office, normal business hours, 877-525-0700, to talk to me about a real wrongful 
wrongful termination case, 877-525-0700 to talk to me, one of my associate attorneys, or my paralegals about your case of sexual harassment, 877 877- Five two five zero seven hundred. If FPI is not paying you all your wages or turnkey vacation rentals, we presently have an action. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I spell my name with a K, and you should stream on YouTube on the Carl Gerber with a K channel. I hope this week you don't have what I refer to as a lot of workplace abuse.